at PCC and see what happens to you <laughs> on a test with these teachers. But some schools, they, you know, they're making big bucks. You can't fail. If you're paying 2,000 bucks for a class, the dean has to get his pay, and so does the president. So nobody can fail. With that kind of money, who would have failed? Huh? With that kind of money, who would have failed? Nobody can fail. Everybody has to get a B or an A. All right, that's another story. All right, next entry. Paid 240 freight on April 4th sale. Paid what, freight? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so in this case, it's going to be freight expense. Freight expense. She makes a T account for freight expense. So now I'm going to just going to tell you something is that outbound, if we, if we were buying, if this case is freight expense and cash. Is freight expense increasing or decreasing? Um, increasing. Debit or credit? Um, debit. Okay. Yeah, because my cash is credit. That's right. So do it. Okay. So freight expense is going to be debited. Now there's a little quirk of, of information you need to know, Angie, here. When we pay for freight, if it's inbound, it's debit inventory because it's considered a part of the cost of the inventory. If it's outbound, it's freight expense if we're selling it. Among other things that it has to do with is called the matching principle. Mm -hmm. There's four princi principles, Mr. CD, that's a mnemonic, M-R-C-D. Revenue recognition principle is what, how we do journal entries and the fact of recognizing revenues and expenses when incurred or occurred, as opposed to getting cash. The uh, matching principle means, Angie, that revenues and expenses occur simultaneously. For example, you're in the school now, this is revenue, they're providing a service. Meanwhile, they have an expense, like Mike's expense, light expense, salary expense, it matches. Now, yes. here's the point. This, I know that uh, this is going to really turn McGowey on. McGowey, you see, when we sell freight, like we sold something, right? Mm -hmm. So we have revenue, so we can have an expense because it matches. Mm -hmm. But when we buy freight, when we buy inventory, mm -hmm. we don't have any revenue. So we can't have an expense. So if we, if we pay for freight on inbound stuff, it's debit inventory. And it'll become an expense later when it's sold. It'll, be, it'll become cost of goods sold when we sell it. That has to do with the matching principle, you see. Okay. All right. In other words, you can't buy freight. If you're buying goods from California, mm -hmm. you don't have a revenue. So therefore, because of the matching principle, you can't have an expense, so you debit. It'll come on, hopefully, like a Johnny Carson joke. It'll make sense to you later on when you're driving down the street. Okay. okay. Next. Okay, now the word credit is on the other side of their books, which has to do with why students say they do it different in the real world, but they don't do it different in the real world, debits and credits. But sometimes it seems that way because it's the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. Now, here, it's the other side of the table. So it basically says there was a, they sent a letter to us, and what did it say? Well, here's the point, McGowey, which you were saying earlier. You have to determine who's sending back who freight. Are we sending back freight, or are they sending back they freight? Send back are you sure? What? I'm not sure. I'm just saying, just make sure it is. Look at the company. What's our company's name? Dakota. Dakota? Is that us? No, that's them. No. Olaf. That's Olaf. Who are we? Olaf. Olaf? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now who's sending who? We are sending it back to them. Oh, we're sending freight back. Okay. So we're sending freight back. I got you now. So what accounts are involved? Uh, inventory. That's right. That's right, exactly so. You, you see, if uh, it had been a cash transaction, they would have sent back cash. Right. Or they would have owed us. But in this case, we owe them money. We owe them $6,900. So, what's the name of the company? Dakota, right? Yes. Okay, so we owe them money. So we're going to send back freight, and they're going to take off what we owe them. So you, write, you are correct on the two accounts, account payable and inventory. Let's do it, young lady. Good. These guys really, I, I was just talking about other colleges because you don't have to study at those colleges. 
and everybody. So these guys don't have that. And the people at NJCampus.com, you know, if you do go to one of those schools, it wouldn't hurt you to learn it anyway. So you could still come on to our website. One of my associates, who's not really in this business of mine, but he claims people just want a piece of paper so the, that they're not going to want to pay for this little tape here. So we'll see. If you go to one of those schools, you don't need to because you're just going to get A or B anyway. But if you want to learn it, it doesn't hurt. So what happened was inventory decreased. That's right. True. And payable decreased. Post up to your T account. Now she goes and posts. She posts up to the inventory, which decreased 500 here in entry four. Is it four? Yeah. And now post up to account payable. Now, on top of that account, write the code on top of that T account, just so you, it's always a good habit, um, Angie. Because, uh, no, you, yeah, I'm speaking to you okay. too, honey. <laughs> You're with me too. That beautiful smile. That's a blessing from God. Um, like I said, I know I spent a lot on the dentist recently. And uh, it's a good habit to do that because you might have more payable. So when you read it later, mm -hmm. okie dokie, next. I got you. So now, on a side paper or somewhere, we'll, we'll erase it. So, okay, so now here's the thing. How much do I owe? The question is, how much do I got to pay Dakota here? Oh, okay. It was at the beginning 6900 Now it says um, that we are going to pay less than discount, which right. is 1%. So what do you think we should do? So it's... Sixty-nine hundred, one percent is what sixty-nine dollars, right? But the only thing is, this we don't owe them that. We don't remember, like you just said before. See the T account, you were so true. We only owe them sixty-four hundred. True, remember oh, that? Oh right, right, right. Because right. we sent some stuff back. Okay. So sixty-four hundred times one percent mm -hmm. is sixty-four, like you said. So. So we'll then for Angie's. So we all, we all, in other words, we owe them on the book 6,400, 6, true? And? I don't get it. Okay, good. Angie, anytime. Praise, praise God. I like when you say that. Angie, you see the account payable for Dakota? Mm -hmm. It's 6,900, but we send 500 stuff, dollars of stuff back, so we only owe them 6,400, mm -hmm. true? Yes. There's a 1% discount. Mm -hmm. So what? McGowey did was she multiplied 6,400 times 0 .01, mm -hmm. which equaled 64. Mm -hmm. That was the discount, so we only owe them 6,400 minus $64. 6,333. And? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Follow you, yeah. Okay. So now... In the journal entry, gonna have to decrease cash sixty three thirty six. So decrease cash sixty three thirty six. Right, because we are going to pay them less than ten percent. Correct. Yes, you're right. Okay, now. The other account, now we now here's step two. We gotta make account payable zero. To make account payable zero, because I don't owe them any more money, debit or credit, how much to account payable? We have to debit sixty four hundred. Correct. So debit sixty four hundred, we're gonna finish the rest of this journal entry on the next segment. All right, the other account. It doesn't bounce.